Good morning, everyone. It's Karen Hooley. I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome to this week's Live Wednesday. Our topic today is going to be conquering your whips or work in progress, if you don't know what the terminology is. Um, I'm going to pop into the um, chat room and see who's all here. We have Linda and Daisy. Good morning. I'm so glad you guys are here. And I'm glad um, <clears throat> you smashed the like button. Um, just as a reminder to everyone who's watching, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, um, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it. Um, and then there's also Dawn from sunny Florida. I'm so glad you're here. It's great to see you here. And Pat is here. Good morning, Pat. It's good to see you. And Renee is from Alabama is here. Great to have you here. We missed you last week. And <laughs> Linda likes the music. I'm so glad. Um, I know I sound sick, guys. Um, I am actually sucking on a cough drop right now because I've been coughing all morning. Um, I have allergies that are just not quitting. And my main medication that I use to help with the allergies I ran out of and um, the even though I ordered because I, I do the um, the three month subscri uh, prescription thing and they have been sitting in the Seattle post office area for um, almost a week now. I don't know why the post office hasn't sent them over. So um, bear with me. I'm hoping that um, I won't cough too much today, but these allergies are just killing me. So, um, but I'm so glad you guys are all here. There's a lot going on around here. Um, so first thing I want to tell you about is the giveaway. Um, this week's giveaway is into the deep, the into the deep cowl. Um, you'll get the digital pattern. And if you are wanting to enter to win this cowl pattern, it's a six page pattern. It's completely charted. Um, it's got um, photos and it's super easy, super fun. But if you're interested in winning this cowl pattern, a digital copy in the comments, I'm just going to add this here really quick in the comments, you're going to type in hashtag spring crochet, no spaces, make sure the hashtags there because otherwise it won't register. Um, so um, it's a really fun cowl. I'm going to take it off here for a sec. Um, so spring crochet is if you're interested in winning that. I'm going to take us off screen for a sec. Um, so the way it starts, it literally starts right here in the in the front. Um, and it you work it like a, um, a shawl until you get to a certain point. And then it joins in the back. And then you start working in the round. So it's a really simple bandana style uh, a cowl. It's perfect for spring. I think that um, if, if the nice fingering white yarn, um, it's perfect to wear on those cooler days where you just need a little something on your chest. Um, but it's, it's, it's so, so simple to make. Um, the yarn that I made it in is from Inner Yarn Zen. She did a special dye. I do believe she still is selling this colorway. Um, she did it for my 20th anniversary. Uh, it was my, um, the colorway for my 20th anniversary as a designer. Um, she did a special run of it for this particular pattern. And, um, and then and now I believe it's called... Uh, la, la, la. elusive jellyfish nebula because you guys all know how much I love blue and so it's got the blues and the greens and the and the um it's got speckles it's a, it's a gradient yarn started with the speckles and then it just went into solid colors and all of the solid colors are in, are in the speckle area so um, if you're interested in that, definitely, definitely um, make sure you put in that uh, spring crochet. So make sure you're entered to win that. And I'm going to take that off screen again. And so um, just so you guys know, um, 
I'm trying to get rid of this cough drop. I'm sorry. If I you hear the clicking on my teeth, it's hard to, to suck on a cough drop and talk at the same time. I apologize. Um, okay. Hang on one sec, guys. I'm really looking forward to allergy season being over. I apologize. Um, okay. So um, I just want to remind you guys that um, today's, oops, that if you have a question about today's topic, um, make sure you type the question mark, or not the question mark, the letter Q, sorry, and the question. Um, I'm going to try to cover this really quick. Um, it's it's kind of a, a build on what we talked about last week, um, which was finding time to crochet. Now, this is a topic. Um, let me put my topic up here. Conquering your whips. Now, um, I have a question for you guys. How many of you have multiple projects going all at the same time? If you do, say me in the comments. <laughs> Um, um, this is a merino nylon blend, Renee, just so that you know, um, but you don't have to use that as long as it's fingering weight, you're good to go. Good morning, Kelly. I just saw you pop in and Kelly says me, um, you have multiple projects going at the same time. Linda's got multiple projects going at the same time. Dawn has multiple projects going at the same time. Awesome. Okay. So, um, and somebody else just popped in with something. Oh, and Betty. Good morning, Betty. Good to see you here. Are you a new follower? Um, or is this your first time here? I don't know that you've been here before. And BCCWS channel, six projects in progress. Yes, me too. Um, I have one, two, three right now that are in progress. Um, and Pat says me and Betty says, yes, you're new. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here to watch with us. Um, I'm so glad that, um, you, you, you popped in. Uh, we were love, we would love to have you here more often. So I'm glad you, you stopped in. Um, okay. So let's talk about these projects. Okay. So the biggest thing with multiple projects is, that we tend to start a project and then one of a million things happens. <laughs> um, it could be that life gets in the way and you put it aside and then you forget about it. It could be that you see another project you want to do and you start that project. It could be that the yarn isn't working the way you thought it was going to work. So um, you just put it aside until you just decide what you want to do. Um, there could be that um, it's not working out the way you want it to work out. Um, Linda says she's got an active progress and two more sitting in the project that I have starditis. Yep. Starditis is a big thing. Everybody sees a, uh, a project they want to do and it, <laughs> they just start it. Um, and then you have all these multiple projects. At one point I had like 12 project bags. So I totally understand. Now I try to keep it under control. I have a pair of socks that's always going um, somewhere. Um, this That's because it's usually my travel project. So I always have a pair of socks going. Um, and then I have a sweater right now that's going. Um, that's for me. And I put that aside about two months ago. I haven't worked on it again. I need to, I need to start working on it. And then I have a current crochet project. Um, that, that I'll be showing you guys later um, that I'm working on. So I have those three for sure. Um, and I think there might be one more that I'm forgetting about. So yes, um, but but usually what ends up happening is you've got starditis and you need to do something about it. Um, and you, you just can't not start because you're so excited about this pattern. So um, it, so how many of you have more than let's see, how about, how many of you have more than five projects um, going all at once? I saw somebody um, be, be, I think this is Liz, right? BCCWS channel, that's Liz. Um, I think you said you had six projects. Anybody have more than five? I know Linda's got three. Anybody have more than five? You don't have to give me a number, just 
just let me know, say yes, me, or I have more, or I have a problem with starditis, <laughs> any of that. Um, Liz, yes. Okay, perfect. I thought I could, I'm trying to remember people's names when they don't have their actual name on the screen. So I'm glad I could remember. Um, so anyway, let's see. Oh, I got a couple more. Uh, Renee's got three. Um, Betty's got more than five. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so oh, I just saw another one come up. Oops. I have way more than five. Okay. Um, well, today, what I'm going to try to do is help you get those organized. Um, uh, Kelly says she has a problem with finishitis. Um, that, that is a, another problem. Yes. And Linda says, I forgot I have a couple more in other <laughs> project bags. I have two crochet at least and two knitting. I don't like one of the knitted projects, so I'll probably rip it out. Yep. That happens to me all the time, whether it's knit or crochet. So um, I'm going to give you five, five ways to kind of, um, it's kind of almost like a checklist to conquer your whips. Your, because a lot of times you'll see if you take all your whips and you put them all in the same spot, you get a little overwhelmed. And I know that's what happened to me. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you a little quick checklist on how to um, maybe uh, get these organized and conquer them so that you won't have quite so many projects. Okay, so first tip is to purge them, okay? Now, it, the best thing to do is to take all of, if all of the ones that you can find. I mean, it, it, I know that a lot of times something gets shoved in the back of a closet or under a bed and you forget it's there and you'll find it 10 years later down the road because that's happened to me as well. Um, but all the ones that you know where they are, bring them all in one place, okay? And then you're going to go through them and you're going to... Uh, put them in one of three piles. Okay. So the first pile is going to be called need to finish first. And that's mostly something like gifts or projects that have a deadline of some sort, like a baby coming, or you're fit doing this for a wedding or someone's birthday or, you know, anything like that. So that's your first pile. Your second is going to be not pressing something that you're doing for fun for yourself. Maybe it's, it's a shawl that you just, you know, it's, you don't have it planned as a gift. You may not be making it for yourself, but it's just something that you saw and it was fun or, or you are making it for yourself and you really don't have a deadline for it. Put it in the second pile. And the third pile is always the funnest pile. And it's always the interesting it's interesting to find what you put in there because I know what I did mine. There were some projects in there that I was shocked I put in this pile, but that pile is called, I don't want to finish this. <laughs> and it could be for all the reasons we mentioned before, the yarn is not right, or it's not turning out the way you want to, or something like that. Um, if you have projects in that, I don't want to finish this pile, I would say, once you've separated everything out, start with that pile and just rip them all out, you know, frog them all, get the yarn um, in a format that you can use it again for something else or put it on your shelf or whatever it is that you want to do. But that's the easiest pile to get rid of. So I would immediately start by ripping all those projects out. Okay. Anybody have questions on that at all? Anybody have another idea for a different pile that I may not have mentioned? I'm going to take a sip of water here. Anybody? Okay. So let's go to the second step is to organize them. Okay. And this, um, this is kind of an interesting um, way to do it. I um, This is how I did mine and it actually helped. So I, I mean, if you have a different way, I would love it if you put it in the comments, what another way to organize your, your works in progress. But 
what I did was I grabbed a piece of paper. I made three columns. And I the first column was the name of the project. The second one was who it was for. And the third is when it needs to be finished. So if it had a deadline, like a baby shower or someone's birthday or something like that, I put, you know, the date that I needed to get it done so that it would be ready in time. And, and when I say done, that means all the ends woven in and blocked. <laughs> so um, that's really important. Now, you don't have to put them in date order. Just put them in, in you know, as you go through the bags, just list them. And then once you've listed them, you can go back and um, number them with a different color. Like I use red and I'll say, okay, this one's got the, the, the earliest deadline. So that'll be one and then two, three, four, whatever order you want to do that. And um, those are the, the need to finish pile. And then you also want to do that with your not pressing pile. Just kind of, you don't necessarily have to put a date on it, but if, if there is a date that you would like to get it done because you want to wear it to an event or something like that, um, make sure you put that on the list too. So I would go start with your, these need to get done because the dates are coming soon. And then the, then add the, um, the not pressing ones to the bottom of the list. Okay. And then once the list is completed, um, once, uh, you've got the list completed and got them in order, then you have a list that you can actually use as a checklist to cross things off. So you can say, okay, this one's done. This one's done. This one's done. Um, Linda's got a little post here. Um, let's see what she say. I try to work on my whips. Then I have to start a prayer shawl in the middle that has to get done due to time constraints for someone who doesn't have much time. That's how I got so far behind. <laughs> yes. It's usually something that comes up in the middle of you're working on something and then something comes up that you have the pressing deadline for. Um, and that's, that's usually what happens to me too. So, okay. Um, and then the other thing is when you're organizing your projects, make sure each project has its own bag. So if you don't have enough project bags, like I have this project bag that I'm using right now for my, cur my current crochet projects, sorry guys. Um, if you don't have a project bag, enough project bags, Use the block bags. Um, you can buy them in gallons. You can buy them in. The, I have these huge five-gallon project bag, uh, a zip block bags that I use for projects. Um, so make sure you put them all in. And if if you only have um, a limited number of hooks, when if and you need to move hook from one bag to another, make sure you have a little piece of paper or on top of the pattern or whatever it is put the hook size that you were using. And if you have different multiple hooks, I, I know a lot of people who um, for, for certain types of yarns, they want to use a metal hook, but for other types of yarns, they want to use a bamboo hook or a wood hook. Um, make sure you put the brand on it too, so that you can go back and make sure you're using the right hook that you started the project with. That's really important. And when you organize them, make sure that the, the all of the yarn is in the project bag as well as the pattern or a photocopy of the pattern, or at least a slip of paper that says where to find the pattern. Uh, so um, I know a lot of people um, get digital patterns and print them out and stick them in their bags. Other people use their tablets. And so you want to make sure that um, you don't want to just stick your tablet in the project bag because you might need it for something else. So make sure that you list the name of the pattern. And if you have a special folder or special cloud application that you're storing your patterns in, or if you're just using Ravelry or something else, make sure you have that written down in your project bag. Does that make sense, guys, so far? Um, the other thing, too is um, once the projects are all separated, um, you, I have, and I forgot to bring it upstairs with me, but I went to a, one of my local stores and I bought a basket. You can go to Michael's. Um, we have a place called Fred Meyer here that sells um, home goods as well as groceries. It's kind of like one of those big superstores, like Target kind of thing. Um, but I got this big white basket. It's probably 18, 20 inches tall and round like this around and I stick all my project bags in order of how the dates go with what's one, what's two, what's three, what's four, that kind of thing. 
Um, and I have them in there um, when I have multiple bags. And then I can just pull the next one out and the next one out. And even on your list that you make, if you want to state what type of project bag it is, you know, like I could use with this one, I could say, it's my baby Yoda bag that has this project in it, that kind of thing. So that's, that's super important too for organization. Renee just posted, I recently discovered large Ziploc bags. I like them a lot. Me too. I love them. I've been using them probably for like four or five years now. Um, I don't, I can't say that I use them for all of my projects, but I do use them for a good majority that, uh, especially sweater quantities and things like that, where I need, uh, I mean, I have a lot of yarn for something. Um, and hello, Sharon, it's good to hear you I pick up totes and bins at the dart. Yeah, that's the other place. A dollar store is a really good place too. I didn't even think about that. Totes and bins at the dollar store are awesome. That's a really good, good tip there. Okay. So I've noticed there's a couple of new people here just as a reminder before I go with the next one, um, the giveaway today is I'm gonna I'm gonna um, put me back on the screen here is my Into the Deep cowl that I'm wearing. This is the giveaway. You'll get a digital copy of the pattern. This is just the print version. I'm wearing the cowl right now, um, and if you would like to win a copy of this pattern in the chat, type hashtag Spring Crochet. Um, make sure you do that. And before the end of the show, I'm going to be drawing right before I go offline. So you could have a bit of time, but make sure that you do do that. Okay, so let's go back to our, our, uh, our points here. Okay, so we have purged our whips and we've recovered the yarn of those that we don't want to finish. And we've organized them. So there's a, a couple things here that you need to do. Um, I already have that pattern, so I won't enter to give other people a chance. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that, that if you do that. That was terrific. Okay, and Betty put hers in, and Kelly put hers in. Okay, so let's go to tip number three, which is start with easy win whips. Now, Granted, I did give you a, a, a checklist and say to organize them by date and 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 do them in um, in order that they need to get done. However, sometimes you have a project that might just need to have the ends woven in and be blocked. That's what I call an easy win whip. So it might have a, a, a deadline that's a little bit later than one of the others or two of the others or whatever. It, but take care of that business first, get the, the ends woven in, block it if it needs to be blocked. And then you can cross that right off your list. I mean, that is, you know, so important. Or maybe you, you're you just on the last couple rows of an edging. Finish the edging, you know, fasten off, weave your ends in, block it, get it done. And you can quickly, you know, it might take you, you know, one evening or even an hour, you know, to, to finish what you need to finish on that project, then you can cross it off. So make sure that you do do that. Um, let's see what Pat says here. Me too. I realize I already have this pattern, so I've retracted. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. I'm that, that's good. I'm glad you guys are doing that. Um, I, so anybody have any other tips about um, easy win projects? Um, what would be an easy win project? Any questions about easy win projects? Um, maybe you started a pot holder for your kitchen and that got pushed aside and it's still sitting in a bag. Finish that, you know, because pot holders don't take that long or dishcloth or something like that. Those are all easy wins. Make sense, guys, so far? Okay. Fourth tip, remove all distractions. Now, this is my big issue. <laughs> okay, so removing um, all distractions. So one of the things I, I taught, I talked about earlier was that I have that basket that I put all the projects in. Well, I also 
have a spot where that, even though it's close to where I sit, when I'm crocheting and watching TV, or um, if I've got something that I'm working on, I have a special chair that I usually go sit in. Um, I can't see it when I'm sitting in that chair. Okay. <laughs> so um, that, that way, if you're not looking at your projects, they won't be calling to you. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Oh, man. Okay. You struggle with the ones that, that just those ones the most, especially if there are many ends or if it needs me, yeah, blocked and sewn together. Those are, that's the one that most people struggle with. They, they'll finish a project, but they won't weave in the ends and block it and sew it together or whatever it is to need to do. But yes, that is a huge issue. And I see that, and soap stacks are quick, yeah, quick and easy. Give them a lot. Oh yeah, that's true too. That is true too with hands or, yeah. So I, 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 that's a really good tip, the, the soap sacks. But I mean, I'm talking about projects that are already started. So, um, but anyway, so remove those distractions. So um, there's a couple things that you want to do besides, you know, move them out of the way so you're not looking at all of them and you can focus on your, your, your project that you're working on at the moment. Um, so you want to set aside some time just for crochet. So we talked about that last week about how to put it in your calendar or say that every evening from this time to this time or every Saturday, I'm going to spend two hours crocheting, whatever it is, but make sure you set aside time that is only for current whips, not to start a new project. So that's something you need to think about too, is that when you're setting aside time and you want to get through all of these projects, make sure that it's a time that is only for a particular project or your whips or whatever. Okay. Another thing you can do to help with distractions is not buy new yarn for a new project until you finish a project. So kind of maybe do a trade for a trade. So say like for me, okay, I have a sweater that I need to finish for myself and I won't buy any more new yarn for a project for me until I finish the sweater. When I finish the sweater, I'll go to the store and buy myself a project. Does that make sense? That kind of thing. Or I'm going to finish this pot holder and then maybe I'll go to the store and get a new crochet hook that I want to try. Or um, I have this baby blanket that's ready for the shower and I want to make a hat and, and sweater to go with it. I won't buy the yarn for the hat and the sweater until the, the blanket's done. That kind of thing. Does that make sense, guys? That kind of thing. Um, I just saw Kelly put in. No new yarn. Yeah, I know. That's a tough one. But, you know, it works. At least it works for me. So um, a, a third thing is uh, a, this. Uh, it's a huge distraction. And this is probably my biggest distraction. And I've learned to deal with this one by, um, it's called, it says, keep your smartphone away from you as you work. So you aren't tempted to scroll through Instagram or other social media. I have learned to move my phone away from me when I have to finish a project. So sometimes if I'm here in my office working, I have a chair just across the room. I leave my phone here on my desk and I am not allowed to get up until I finish whatever I need to finish on that project. Um, if I'm watching television, my phone is usually far away from me while I'm crocheting. So I won't grab it and, and stop that kind of thing. So that's huge. That's a huge distraction. Social media is a huge distraction for me. So um, just so you guys know, if that's something that I have a trouble with, I don't know about you guys, but I do too. Um, oh, You've already won a pattern. Okay, Renee, that's, that's, that's fine too. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad that's, um, that you guys are doing that. I appreciate that. I mean, it, that you don't have to do that if you've already won. I, I, I won't give away a pattern to someone two weeks in a row, but I won't, um, I, I'm not going to say don't enter if you haven't won in a couple weeks or three weeks or whatever. So don't worry about that. Um, and I, I don't have any more for room for yarn hoard. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. And then you can also set aside, I said, mentioned this before, but set aside a time every day or week to work on your current work in progress. So 
Um, that's, that's something that you need to be consistent with is too, is make sure that if you've got a project and you want to get it done, that you have consistent time to work on it, be consistent working on it. Doesn't mean you can't be working on another project at the same time, but like Linda was saying, she has a current project, a project, and then she has a couple others. And then she, if something comes in that has a deadline, it has to be done quickly. Um, you can do that. That's not a, not an issue, but make sure that you do set aside time every week or every day, depending on what your schedule is like, just to work on that project, that whip that, that you need to get done. Okay. And then the last thing on this one is to bring it with you if it's, if it's portable everywhere you go. So remember last week I talked about how, when I was working full time for a customer service company, um, when I was on the phones, I'd have that project with me. I could work on it while I was talking to customers. I'd work on it at my lunch hour. Whenever we go on trips, I bring things with me, that kind of thing. If it's portable enough to do that, bring it with you. Spot potholders for a good example. Um, baby blankets that are done in motifs, another good project to bring with you. Things like that. So um, you don't make, you could work them out of order if there's something that's more portable that you can bring with you for, you know, in between and work on the bigger projects with, at, at a scheduled time at home. So there's that kind of thing too. So, and Linda says, I don't have any social media except for YouTube. I can listen, crochet in it. Yep. There you go. See, I have to be careful with that because I'll tend to get focused on the video or if I'm not careful. Um, television doesn't seem to do that to me as much as, as watching videos on my phone. So I literally have to move my phone away from me. Okay. And number five, and we just touched on this a little bit is to reward yourself. Okay. And reward yourself um, like I said, if you finish a project, go buy some yarn or head to your favorite coffee shop and get your, your favorite treat from the coffee shop or, you know, say, okay, if I finish a sweater if I'm making for myself, I'm going to go get my nails done in a color that matches, or I'm going to get a pedicure or, you know, I'm going to, you know, something that rewards yourself for getting something done because you, a lot of times, I know for me that knowing that if I finish this, something good's going to happen afterwards, that's a big, big motivator for me. So if doing something like that is, is perfect. Um, the most important thing when it comes to finishing your projects is to make a plan and stick with it. Okay. Um, these are just starting points for you guys. If you have any other suggestions, make sure you put them in the chat um, because I'd love to share them. I know that um, a lot of people um, might have other ways of rewarding themselves or removing distractions or, or figuring out ways to get things done. But I know for me, having too many projects that need to get done tends to make me more stressed out and I push them off even more than if I only have like two or three projects going at one time. I've learned that um, I've learned myself, I guess is really the, what I want to say is that I've learned that if I start something, I need to finish it. That's why I don't have second sock syndrome when I'm making socks. Um, there's something about having the complete set that motivates me. There's something about saying, okay, I've got the sweater that I put off. Yes, I've put it off, but that's because I had other things that had to happen. And then I also had my cancer treatments that didn't allow me to focus enough to do work on a sweater. So now that my brain is starting to um, come back, I probably pick it up again and start working on it. Um, maybe an hour or so every night before um, I go to bed or something like that. Um, but I know that if I have more than three or four, three projects usually is where my, my sweet spot is. If I get more than three projects, I go, oh my gosh, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. And it stresses me out and then I don't do anything. So you learn what, what triggers you. But I do know that most people, the more projects they see in this pile, the more willing they're going to be to start getting through them all. So does that make sense, guys? 
Uh, Linda says, my smaller projects are always in my purse. I've learned a lesson. Yep, that's where my socks are. In fact, my purse is in the other room and I've got my sock bat, my socks in there. Yep. Um, sometimes I add a whip to the calendar on my phone. Helps to Yes, that's another good one. Really, really good one. I will I have a, every, when, every once in a while when I have a ma some major deadlines for projects, like I have one coming up, I'm waiting for the yarn. Um, the, I believe she's shipping by Friday. Um, but that one's going to go on my, my calendar so that I know what needs to get done. So yes, that's absolutely a big project, a, a good way to do it. Uh, Linda also says, if I do a large housework project, I reward myself with extra crochet or knit time. There you go. That's a good way to do it too. If you work on, on your, one of the whips that you need to get done, you know, if maybe do an hour for an hour or two hours on the whip that you need to get done and an hour on the new project that you want to work on. So there's different ways to reward yourself. That's, that's a great one too. So anybody else have anything you want to talk about on that? Any questions? What I was talking about? Um, I'm just going to throw this back up there really quick. Don't forget to put in your spring crochet if you'd like to win a copy of this pattern for the cowl. And okay. I just saw another one. Did, nope, that's the one that just came in. Okay. Um, I'm going to take this banner off. That's pretty much all I've had. So if you have anything else on um, conquering your whips, um, let me know and just put them in the chat. Otherwise, um, or, you know, I'll be watching the chat now as we're, as we're here. Um, okay. So, um, let me show you what I'm working on. <laughs> I'm working on a new pattern. I'm, I'm finally getting my crochet mojo back. Um, this is a yarn. I showed you a while ago when I got it. Um, I think I got it last year, actually. It was, a, it was three, you can see all the, the yarns, there's three colors. That I'm working with. This is a project I'm working on right now. Um, I can't, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but um, I just had to show you the way the colors are working out. It's turning out really, really cool. I'm using the one, two, three uh, color work technique where you do a one, one color one way, color two this way, color three, and then pick up one and go this way, two, three, you know, so every row's got a different color. And it's really been a lot of fun to, um, to work on. So um, I'm probably going to do the final pattern in a different color. Um, just because I, as much as I really like, oops, I got it sideways. Um, I like the way these colors are coming out. I don't think it's going to photograph that well. I don't know if that makes sense. But um, the yarn is from Nanette Wake Studio. I'm going to... Um, show you her label there the network studio and it, this one actually was a one of a kind a set of three that she just matched together and put them together each one of the the hanks in this were 200 yards so it's a total of 600 yards roughly so um but you can mix and match with her colors if you ever want to go look she's a local um, Washington Dyer, and she's actually a weaver, and sh her husband does woodworking, and so she sells yarn bowls that he makes. Um, I don't think I have her website here. Okay, I'll put it in the comments. It's oh. weird. I haven't had that happen in a while. There we go. Um, I put our website in the chat. Um, let's see. Oh, Judy's here. Good morning, Judy, and good to see you. Renee asks, is the cowl pattern available on your website? Yes, all of my patterns that I give away here are already, re already released patterns. So yes, it is available on my website. Um, this is actually my old layouts. So it was, um, again, my 20th anniversary pattern. 
Um, that was what, uh, that was 2017 is when I designed it. So, um, or released it. So this is, this is the, the old layout for my pattern. So yes. Um, I need to set aside time to find solutions for projects I'm stuck on. My project is 85% done and I like it, but I need to make modifications in the final steps to have it work out right. Um, what kind of things are you talking about? Are you talking about like fitting issues or you don't have enough yarn or that kind of thing? Let me know, Liz, and then I might be able to give you some ideas on how to figure out what you need to do. Um, I love the colors in that mystery project. I do too. They're really pretty. I just don't think they're going to photograph that well. That's why I'm probably going to make it in another color. Um, just so you know, I rarely have more than one project on the go. It drives me crazy to have more. You know, there's a lot of people that are like you and that's perfectly okay. <laughs> um, I'm usually, I've usually get to that point. Um, it's just, I have a sweater and I always have a pair of socks going. That's just I always have that, but my focus right now is on this project that I just showed you guys. So that is definitely a thing. I need to organize my yarn. Um, Betty, I did talk about um, stash a few weeks ago. So if you look through my YouTube videos, especially the live streams, I did talk about organizing stash a little bit, shopping your stash. Um, um, but what I will recommend is if you, um, no olive knits. She's a knitter, but I don't know if you're a knitter as well, or if you're a knitter and crocheter or just a crocheter, but olive knits has a class. That she, I think she does it quarterly called, um, stash sprint where she talks. I mean, for literally for six weeks, you go through and organize your stash and she gives you lots of tips and ways to, to deal with your stash. So, um, I highly recommend, highly recommend that class. And then this is the, the um, yarn company of that yarn that I just showed you in that project. So um, there's that. Okay. Um, Liz says it's a cardi with trim down the center edges, but the trim is too heavy in weight. And Oh, okay. Um, that's going to be a trial and error kind of thing. I understand that. Um, you're probably going to either have to... Oh, good question. Um, you might have to reduce the size of the trim or come up with a different trim or find a lighter weight yarn that you can use to accent, um, that kind of thing. Um, but that's going to be a trial and error kind of thing because, yeah, I, that's... Um, that's, I, I don't know what weight you're doing it in. Um, if it's, if it's fingering or worsted or what, or DK or whatever, but that's where, if it's a crochet, a cardigan, I'm assuming it's a crochet cardigan, but with crochet, um, there are some, a lot of designers who use a lot of different things that knitters do, you know, lots of trims that are cool looking, but it, depending on the weight of the yarn you're using, it, it's going to pull. And those are things that in my 20, almost 24 years of designing, uh, you just kind of, you kind of learn that you can't do this type of thing with this kind of yarn or in crochet. It just doesn't work that way. So it's going to take some time, uh, a trial and error. That's for sure. Um, you probably have to. Yeah. And I, yeah, I would think that the trim is probably where you're going to have to, um, deal with that. Cause that's a, that's a difficult one. That is for sure. Okay. So, um, I know a couple of you have asked me in the past, um, just to give you guys an update when my next doctor's appointment was. And I think I forgot to tell you guys last week, but it was yesterday um, for my cancer. I had my my checkup and they did a scan and I am still cancer free. I'm so excited to tell you guys that. Still cancer free. So um, I am going into my last round of treatments. As long as I remain cancer free after that, I won't be doing any more treatments, just regular checkups. Um, my next round of treatments, they want me to do them in May because she said, if I wait till June, it's too far out. So I'm going to be doing them in May. I don't have dates yet because the gal who does the schedule 
it was out yesterday and I'm hoping to hear from her today, but if I don't hear by Monday, um, if I don't hear by Monday, I will be calling them, but I should be hearing before Monday, I think. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for all the well wishes. Um, I can't even tell you how, what a relief that is. That means that I, if I have my treatments in, um, in May, I'll probably have the final checkup in July or August, probably July, but depending on the final date, it might be August. Um, and then after that, I don't know what the periodic treat, uh, checks are, but I will, I'll find out then, I guess. But I'm so, Stephanie, good morning. You're here. It's good to hear to see you here. Um, and Renee, thank you. You guys, I'm so <laughs> you pray every day. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. And Betty, thank you so much. Um, it's been, I, I realized last week that it was, it's been 15 months since my original diagnosis. And so it's, um, it's been a long 15 months. It feels like it's longer than that. <sighs> You had just finished. That's okay. That's okay, Stephanie. I'm glad you were here. Um, it just was a reminder too. I'm just going to throw that back up there to enter to win. Um, so yeah, it's been an interesting, an interesting, interesting month, uh, you know, 15 months. Um, having bladder cancer is very different than most other cancers. So um, the one thing the doctor did say is she, the first thing she said to me before she even checked me was how did the last treatments go? And I told her, I said, really, you know, this one, I haven't bounced back as quick as, as the last few. And she says, yeah, the third round is usually the worst. And she said, you feel run down and tired all the time. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And she says, how are your allergies? And I said, they're horrible. And she says, yeah, that's because my, uh, the treatments do that to me, you know, and I've mentioned that in the past. So the reason my allergies are so bad right now is because not only because I don't have the right medication right now, but I, um, I am under treatment. So it makes things a little worse, but I'm so happy to be at that point of my treatment. So yay. Um, so guys, for those of you who are just joining us, um, I just want to make sure you guys know about the giveaway. I popped to the, the code word to put in the chat. Um, also, um, if you haven't hit the like button, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Um, and then if you click on the bell as well, it will notify you every time I do go live, as well as let you know when I upload new patterns. And I have committed to doing, or not patterns, new videos. And I've committed to doing a new video every week. So make sure you are subscribed and you have um, clicked the bell to get those notifications. Um, let's see what else is going on here. I have a list in front of me. So um, I told you about that. Oh, and then another little thing I want to tell you about. I don't have the booth number yet, but I will be vending for those of you who might be interested. Um, the weekend of February or February, June 4th and 5th, I will be a vendor in the market at uh, Fiber Fusion Northwest. I'm going to put that link in the chat as well. Oops. And I just lost fusion.net. Okay. Um, Fiber Fusion is a local fiber festival. It's very similar if you've ever heard of Rhinebeck or Maryland Wool, Sheep and Wool Festival, those kinds of things. Fiber Fusion is the same thing. It's run by our local breeders here in Washington State. It's on the west side of the state. Um, I will be a vendor in the market. I'm very excited. This is my first live event in two years plus. <laughs> So, and I'm going to be staying, um, it's on the West side, which is, um, it used to be that I could set up my booth, come home and then just go back and forth. But now I have um, a friend who, who actually just started a craft retreat house in the, just the neighborhood near where I used to live. And she's letting me stay there. So I'll be, I have a home base, which is really nice. Um, but I really hope that you guys will, uh, pop in and, um, 
if you if you're in the area, I know a lot of you won't be in the area. Um, it, but what's really cool about this event is it used to be the same weekend as Rhinebeck in New York in um, October every year. So um, they've moved it now to June because the weather's better. And I am so excited because that means I can travel the pass to go over there and not have to worry about snow or being stuck or anything. So I'm really excited to be there. And it's going to be beautiful weather. It's at the, our Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe, Washington. And this is our, well, they're calling it our 10th anniversary, um, even though our 10th anniversary was 2020. <laughs> um but yeah, of course, it's been canceled until this year. So uh, I'm really excited. We're going into a new building. The vendor market's bigger. There's crochet classes. Well, this year, there's no crochet classes. I don't know why. Um, I would have pitched classes if I knew where my cancer was going to be. But also, I need help in my booth. So um, I don't have anybody that um, I can trust to be in my booth while I'm teaching classes this year. So I'm not teaching. But um, I will be there and I'm considering trying to find somebody so that next year I can actually teach some classes as well as run the booth. So, but if you're interested, um, I just put the, the post in the, the chat uh, or not the post, the link to the event on the chat. And if, if just as a side note, Schmutzarella Yarns will be there. Uh, the uh, Yarn Underground is another dyer. She does the uh, Palouse Yarn Company. Um, she will be there. Who's, she's got some awesome yarn, too. I have her yarn. Um, let me find it. Is this it? Palouse Yarn Company. This is a gray, but it's kind of a, and it's a single ply, but it's her Merino Fine. And she does some amazing yarns. And I discovered her when my daughter was in college. Because her, even though she's in Idaho, where my daughter went to college, literally seven miles away was the Idaho border. And the next town over, it, or the, the town right there at the border is Moscow, Idaho, where the University of Idaho is. And um, she has a yarn shop there as well as dyeing yarn. So she will be there. Amazing yarn. If you're looking for another uh, hand dyer, um, uh, there's going to be a company there called Rocks and Rocks and more accents. I think if you've ever seen me wear the shawl pins that are magnetic, that look like stones, I have a blue one and a green one. Um, she's going to be there. I mean, there's, there's local mills, there's all sorts of stuff. So I'm really excited to be there this year. Um, I miss, I miss shows. I can't even tell you how much I miss shows. Would love to just pop in. I know. I know most of you are probably not Washington State people and aren't planning to go up to Washington State. But if you are, <laughs> make sure you check it out. Um, at least for those of you who are watching live. If you're watching after the fact, if you and you're and you're local, make sure you, you attend. Um, so that is pretty much all I've got for this week, guys. Unless you guys have anything you want me to talk about, I have a few more minutes here before I need to go. And before I do the giveaway, I'm just going to pop the, the stream. And for those of you who were watching after the fact, um, this is only for people who are here live. So hopefully you'll watch um, next week live if you can. And you'll be able to enter it to win a new pattern for next week. So um, the dyer of the gray yarn. Um, let me make sure to spell it right. So I'm going to pull the yarn back. It's Palouse Yarn Company or Palouse Yarn Company. Oh, I can't spell today. Oh, I put my caps lock on. That's why. Palouse Yarn Yarn Company. And let me make sure I spelled that right. Um, Palouse. Palouse are the Palouse is actually the Palouse Mountains. Um, so that's in the chat now, Renee, for you. Um, the Palouse Mountains are where on eastern Washington and part of Idaho. So on the western part of Idaho. So um, that's why it's called Palouse Yarn Company. Um, you're welcome, Liz. I'm glad you are eager to start your your chat. Wish that you were closer. What will you be selling? What will I be selling? I will have my... All of my books, 
Um, all of my older patterns that are in this format, rather than, I'm going to take this off the screen now. Um, the patterns that are in this format rather than in my new format. Let me pull one of my new format patterns. Um, the new. This is the old format. This is the new format. You can see my old logo, my new logo, that kind of thing. Um, all of my old patterns that are having prints are going to be um, five dollars instead of the price that's on my website. Just the print version, not the not the digital version. But all those are going to be five dollars, um, so I can get rid of some of the old format patterns, so I can get them reformatted. Um, and I'm trying to think. Um, I'm going to be selling both digital and print, hopefully, all my books. Um, and then there might be some other things I haven't. Um, I haven't fully figured out everything. I'm hoping that Schmutzerell and I can do a some sort of uh, collaboration for something um, for just for the show. And if there's any extras, I will sell them on my website later. But that's kind of where where what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm also going to be promoting the. I'm going to be making flyers for the membership site and um, things like that. So that's what I'll be doing there. And there's the name of the yarn company that I was just talking about, Palouse Yarn Company. Okay, let's put this back on the screen. And I am going to draw. So I'm going to give you guys a little countdown here really quick. Five. You can still enter five. Four, three, two, one, and we're drawing. Linda! <laughs> now, Linda, I know you said that you were going to withdraw, so did you want me to draw again? If um, so, just let me know if you want me to draw again because it won't let you, um, won't let me, um, I guess, disqualify you. So just tell me in the chat really quick. Otherwise, I will send it to you. But if you already have it um, and you want to give it to someone else, let me know. Okay. I'll wait a couple more seconds here before I do another draw, but um, oh, I just saw someone click in. Try another time. Okay, I can do that. One sec. Okay, draw again. Renee. <laughs> so this is, this is going to be... Doing this. So, Renee, did you want me to try another time? Yeah, I saw your name. It won't let you retract them. So, just let me know. Um, yeah, Patricia, so if I uh, let me know if, um, Renee, if you want me to redraw, I just out of just you don't have to, but I'm glad to um, do that. You just mentioned it earlier. So, I just want to make sure. Because I'm glad to put it in there because you haven't won in a while. Okay. All right, guys. I think I am going to sign off. So, Renee, I'm going to go ahead and put it in your, in your um, uh, account on my website. So, Renee, you're the winner. I'm so excited. Make sure you guys pop in next week. Um, I'm going to put my... Um, there we go. I'm going to put myself back on the screen. Um, I am going to be doing our monthly Q and a because it's the last Wednesday of the month. So if you have questions for me, make sure, um, uh, you go to my Karen slash capital Q, small N, small capital A, um, and send me a question. I'm going to be answering random questions. And plus, if you have any questions that come up, once the show starts, I'll be answering those questions as well. So it's just going to be a random questions and answers kind of thing. So have a great rest of your week, guys. I will see you next week and um, have a great weekend. God bless you all. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.